Hi, I'm Gary Hoover. Welcome to my library. This is part of my house. I have over 50,000 books. If you stacked them up, they'd reach four times as tall as the tallest building in the United States. But the number of them, the quantity, is not what I love about them. I've been in love with learning since I was a little kid. I am passionate about a lot of subjects. One of those subjects is retailing. When I was in the eighth grade, I wrote a term paper, The Life Story of the Great Chicago Merchant Marshall Field. I became fascinated with retail stores. How are they built? How do they work? What makes some prosper and others fail? How do they get all that cool stuff into the stores and out into our hands? I spent a life studying retailing. I worked in it for three great big retail companies. I've started my own retail chains. One of them, Bookstop, took on giant companies that were many times our size, and we beat them. We became one of the biggest forces in the industry. Barnes & Noble later bought that company, and it was the way they got into the big bookstore business. But when I look at retailing, to me there's a magic about it. There's something special. People talk about how it's intensely competitive, and it is. They talk about how it's very low margin, not much profit in it. That's often true. Uh, they talk about how there's no protection, there's no intellectual property or patents, you know, no secrets to it. That's for sure. I mean, it's an open book. I can walk into any store and see what they carry, what they sell it for. I can even find out what they pay their employees pretty easily. Once I had a student come up to me and say, Gary, why would you ever start a business where there's no protection, where you can't defend yourself that way? And I said, but look, the richest family in America, the Walton family, if Sam Walton were still alive, he'd be worth about as much as Warren Buffett and Bill Gates put together. Something like four of the five richest families in Europe made it in retailing. Some of Latin America's wealthiest families, some of those in South America. Not that it's all about wealth, but that's some indicator of how successful you can be. At the same time, thousands of retail stores close up and fail. So what is it? There's some sort of magic going on, because it's not rocket science. It doesn't require a lot of degrees. Most of the people who built great retail chains had no degrees, or very few degrees. So what is it? What's this secret? Is retailing, is it a matter of, oh, they're just the big guys, the giants, they control everything. Well, one of the giants who operates today, one of the world's biggest retailers is a company called Costco. And another company, Sam's Clubs, part of Walmart, is in the same industry. Costco didn't start out big. This is an annual report from the year 1980 of a company called The Price Club, started by a man named Saul Price in San Diego. He had whole new ideas about how to sell stuff to people. And in this report, he'd just been open a few years. I think he had two stores open, and he was just going to open two more. And I met with him, and here are my notes about how his first store was going to do 86 or 87 million in this year. In uh, 1981 would have been the year when I was talking to him. And he was talking about how they planned to register with the Securities and Exchange Commission so people could buy their stock all over the United States. This is what gave rise to Costco. One of the guys that worked for him went off and started Costco. Mr. Price built his chain and later sold it to Costco. It all started with one store. We look at Walmart. They seem so powerful. Well, here's a list of the biggest discount store chains in America in 1970. And number one was a company called Kmart. Now, Kmart opened their first store in 1962. So they'd been at it for eight years, and they had already passed up a bunch of other companies to become number one. Way down, and then a bunch of companies you probably never heard of. Gibson, Zare, Corvette, Wolco, Two Guys, Tops, Gem, Arlen's, Great Eastern, J.M. Fields. Then number 12, a company called Target, which was also started in 1962. So maybe the people at Target were saying, oh my gosh, we're way behind these guys. Eight years into it, we're only 12th. I go on down the list. This is the 71 biggest companies. The last one on here, Little Red Owl Family Centers in Minneapolis, was only doing $50 million a year, which isn't much in retailing. There's no Walmart. Walmart was also started in 1962, but in its first eight years, it wasn't even big enough to get into these top 71 discount store chains. Now, all these guys are gone. I don't know if any of them are still around, maybe one or two, outside of Kmart, which has gone bankrupt, and Target, which is far bigger than Kmart. But obviously, the biggest of them all is Walmart. How does this work? Where did it all start? I go back when I look, I want to study the context of an industry. I want to know where it came from. So here, 
I have a 1989, I'm sorry, 1889 brochure from the Bon Marché. This is a Paris department store. It was then, 1889, and it still is. This brochure they publish in English for all the American and English visitors to the great Paris World's Fair of 1889. The one at which they built the Eiffel Tower, which everybody thought was outrageous at the time. And the store, maybe you can see, is just beautiful. And it was the talk of the world. And it was the first great high volume retail store on earth. It wasn't a dream of some big capitalist or somebody strange. It was this man. And he later died and his wife ran it. Mr. Busiku, if my French is okay. But I study these things. I look back at them and I say, what can we learn from Busiku? What can we learn from Saul Price? What can we learn from Sam Walton? What really are the key things of retailing? Is it all the stuff we hear today, buy in huge quantities, have it made in China, manage your supply chain and success will be yours? Or is it something in some ways simpler, more subtle? In the future, I hope to make more little videos about retailing and talk about specifics. And I'm also in the interim, on Saturday, October 9th, going to give an all-day seminar in Austin, Texas about retailing, which I also hope to repeat. I'd love to see you at that seminar, but most of all, I look forward to seeing you here and somewhere out on the World Wide Web. See you later.